Hey there, so what we've got here is a master detail application which is loading information from your server. It's going to load information from the database and in this case I made a blog. So these are the titles of the blogs and when you click on them you get the contents of that blog post. They're not very long. What I did is I made a virtual machine running Lubuntu and in that virtual machine I just installed Apache and MySQL which is one command line to install it. I'll upload this whole blog thing. So now what we have is we have this posts. So you can do post.json. Actually, we'll do it from Firefox. Let's see. So it formats it nicely. So we have posts.json, but we also have posts. So I have sort of a REST API behind all this. So for the rest of this tutorial, I'm going to be setting up the server itself. If you want to start coding the iOS app, just skip to the next tutorial. And you can do posts view one dot dot json and it'll do that but without the json it'll do that you can also do dot xml it'll give you an xml version of it reason i did this is because it was super easy to install the other thing you're going to want to pull up is you're going to want to grab charles which is really good because you can see what data is going through your network and so if i were to rerun this app you'll see that from Charles, it went to 192.168.1.16 and it grabbed post.json and the response was this beautifully formatted uh, JSON request and response. So what you'll do first is you'll get some sort of service running that returns JSON and you can use my service that I made and I will upload this uh, for you. And one way you can do this is you can either use VirtualBox or I'm using VMware Fusion, which I find even though you have to pay for it, it really takes a lot of the hassle out. I just loaded up Lumbuntu. I just did a sudo app get update. And then you do sudo app get upgrade. And you say yes to whatever it wants to install. It may take a while the first time you're doing this. And the last thing you're going to do is you're just going to do a sudo apt-get install lamp server. Remember that there's that caret on the end. And this will basically install PHP, MySQL, and everything else you need to get, get this running. Then what you'll do is you'll open up MySQL by doing mysql-u root-p. You'll enter your password that you entered when you were installing that. You want to basically create a database called cake. And that's what I called my database. And once you do that, you should be able to show database, databases, and you should see cake there. And then you can do use cake to select that database. At that point, you can say uh, show tables of which you should have none, but you will then create um, the table, which I'll give you the thing for, which is create table post. You're going to create an ID, which is the primary key, the title, the author, and the content. And then we'll change this later to have uh, comments. You'll create that table. Um, now you'll have the table. You'll open up etc sites, etc Apache sites available. In there, you'll make a cake.conf, so you can do touch uh, cake.conf. I already have it there, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, and then you'll do um, sudo vim cake.conf, which will allow you to edit cake. Make sure that at the top you load module, rewrite module, and you do the uh, rewrite. You'll make your site look like this, and I'll post all this stuff. But you basically are setting it up so that Apache can run your site. After you do that, you want to enable your site, so you'll do a2 en site, and you'll do cake.conf. And you actually should do sudo with that. The site is already enabled for me, but it'll be enabled for you now. At that point, what you want to do is, because Apache 2 comes with some extra security, which will allow you to do certain things, you'll want to turn off some of that security. Just because this is a test server, we're not doing this as a production site, just to get this thing running. So then you'll go to open up to edit sudo vim etc apache2 apache2.conf. 
and in there, ah, so the part where it says directory as root or slash, it was going to say required all, I think denied, you wanna change that to granted because that will allow you to actually have a directory of your site somewhere other than the var www. I'm not particularly a fan of cake PHP, but I do have to say that it does get things running really quickly. That being said, I usually use Flask to, to build my site, but cake PHP allows us to basically get an entire REST API running almost instantly. So then what you'll do is you'll cd into your home directory. You probably wanna make a user called skip. So I think that would be add user. There's two of them. Add user is the easier, more user-friendly one. And let's say you used your name. Now you wanna do sudo. And you enter your new password called um, whatever it is. Your full name is John, your room number is 16, all that other stuff is good. And then what that'll do is in your home directory, that'll create a folder called John or whatever your name is. And then in your directory, I did it in skip, so we'll cd into skip. This, you'll see in here um, all your regular stuff, but you'll import that cake directory, which will have the whole site in there. In the cake directory, you wanna make sure that if you cd into app, cd into config, you'll see um, there's a database.php. You wanna vim that database PHP and you wanna make sure that it's set to what your, PH, your MySQL is. So you, only don't, you don't need to set the test one. This one, you only need to set the default one. So for me, I made my password hat pants. The database name was cake. The login was root, and the host is obviously localhost because it's on this computer itself. If, if you want to, you can also vim into core, and there should be something called salt here. You can change the security salt, and you can change the, C, the uh, cipher seed if you want. And once you do that, you should be good to go. If you go to slash posts, you should see probably no posts available. And at that point, you can then create all your posts and then you can go to post.json and that will uh, give you all of the JSON data for your posts. And what I highly, and then, so because you'll have a bridged connection and you can do this in VirtualBox too, you just need to make sure that you go to your network adapter, make sure that you have a bridged network so that this computer has its own IP address. You need to find out what the IP address of this computer is so that you can view it on your regular computer. You do if, config gives you all the network stuff. Importantly here, you're at 192.168.1.6. So if you go back to your regular computer, you go to here and you go to 192.168.1.6, you should see the site that's being loaded from your virtual machine. From there, you can go to posts and do all your regular stuff. And this is all being loaded off your virtual machine. You can basically dump the virtual machine when you're done with this if you want to. Or if you want to, you can, you know, basically send the entire virtual machine to anybody you want. Um, and then you can view this as a .json file. I have one add-on that allows me to uh, view JSON data, nice and pretty. So if we go to extensions, there's one called JSON view. And by doing that, anytime I view something that has a .json on the end, it will format it nice and pretty in Firefox. And you can do that in Chrome as well. So that's getting the entire server set up. And then there's one other thing, that's if you were to go to uh, Sublime Text, actually go to your terminal, you'll uh, open up either in Vim or Sublime or private ETC hosts. And what you can do there is if you open that up in a text editor, you can take the IP address of your server and you can make it go anywhere just so that you have a site instead of the address to test it with because often you're testing with a real site. So if we set this to, let's say, uh, facebook.com and we save it and we open up here. Now, this is the IP address. If we go to now facebook.com, you could see that it actually goes to our site and not Facebook which is good for testing purposes because often you're using some sort of .com instead of your site being at a port 8080 or something crazy like that. Now you have everything set up and we can start coding. I'll show you how to do that in the next tutorial.